I've been wearing the Apple Watch Ultra, the Whoop 4.0 and the Ultra Human Air for the last four months now as part of this fitness journey I'm on. And I've actually been really surprised to find that the Apple Watch Ultra isn't up to the task. During the last four months, wearing these three devices, I've really changed how I think about my health. And before someone says something in the comments that you don't look like someone who works out or thinks about their health, I've actually lost 40 pounds over the last six months. And I'm gonna go through this video what I've used these devices for and how they've helped me change my lifestyle and how I think about health. I'm gonna assess these devices across five key areas to see which one might be the best choice for you if you're looking to buy a fitness tracker and what I use these devices for together to get me this holistic approach to my help. So let's get started. How's it going folks? My name's Marcus, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here on this channel, I like to talk about technology, EDC, and anything that can help me live a happier, balanced, more productive life. This video is more about the happier, balanced, productive life part, and more about my own fitness and physical health. So let's go. Now all of the products that I talk about in this video today, I've got links in the description below with discounts for you that I've negotiated with these manufacturers. So if you do wanna try them, I'll be talking about some of the discounts you have in this video, but please use the links because it helps support the channel. This is is not a sponsored video it just helps me make more content so category one here is the unboxing experience now the apple watch ultra that i have here i bought a year ago this is not the ultra 2 this is the one that came out whatever 14 15 months ago there's actually no reason to buy the ultra 2 it's exactly the same but in terms of unboxing experience and how the design feels this is premium when you unbox this product you know you're unboxing an apple product they basically set the genre for actually unboxing something so it is the classic it is a beautiful piece of machine titanium this watch feels premium it's heavy on the wrist and here i'm using the apple watch sports loop with it which means i can tighten it down to exactly what i need it to be it's really comfortable I like how chunky it is. I've got reasonably sized wrists and I like that the face takes up most of my wrist when I have it on me. So in terms of unboxing and in terms of comfort, it's a premium product. It's $799 plus VAT, so it would want to be. This is one of the most expensive watches you can get, but this is in terms of a smartwatch, in terms of a fitness tracker, it is one of the more premium products. So second in terms of premium un unboxing experience is the Ultra Human Air. Now the Ultra Human Air retails for $349. If you use my discount link below, you'll save $35, 10% discount, so click on that link. The way it works is when you first order from the website, the thing that they send you is a box with all the different ring sizes. I'm a size 11 ring. They just send you out these little 3D printed rings so that you can decide exactly which one you want to wear. Now they do recommend that you wear it on your index finger. I know some people prefer to wear it on their wedding finger so that you see it, that you don't notice it as much and this is kind of a kind of a trendy, cool wedding ring these days. But I do choose to wear it on my index finger because apparently it does better heartbeat and things like that through your index finger. But sometimes I do mix it up. If I'm using my phone and it's annoying me, I'll wear it on my second finger because they're similar in size. And I am able to change it from hand to hand because my fingers on either hands are, are not that drastically different. But typically wear it on my right hand on my index finger. So once you've decided what size you want using that box that has all the different size in it, which goes from really tiny all the way up to absolutely massive, which you could wear on your thumb, you order it. it actually she took me four weeks for mine to arrive in the mail. Now, in terms of design, I absolutely love it. I went for the matte black. They don't call it matte black. It's some, some sort of gray, but it's basically a matte fat black version. It was totally black when I got it. I've been wearing it for four months now, doing a lot of weightlifting and just bashing it about the place. And it's patinaed really beautifully. You can start to see some of the black wearing away. You can see some of the silver and gray coming out from underneath, but it is really, really nice. In terms of unboxing, when you take the lid off the box, there's the ring sitting right in front of you. One ring to rule them all. It makes you want to put it on and you instantly want to wear it. Now, I'm not a ring wearer. I'm not somebody who typically wears rings, but I've loved wearing this and I actually like how it looks. This is like the only jewelry I wear, but I do like how it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, maybe it doesn't, you decide, but I like it. I think it's. I think you get away with it. People don't tend to notice it. It looks like you're just wearing some jewelry. I just want to take a quick break from the video to ask you to like and subscribe to this video. I've got a small YouTube channel, so everything helps the algorithm find me. Okay, back to the content. And then the last one in terms of unboxing is the Whoop 4.0. This just comes in a cardboard box with some cardboard filling. It's kind of like a big chunky Fitbit. It's got these lovely wool strap. That, so um, I wear mine on my bicep. When you buy it, the strap that comes with it is a wrist strap. So it retails for $239, but that's per year. It's a subscription plan. So when you're buying the Ultra Human Air, you're getting it and you're keeping it forever, albeit for $350. But when you buy the Whoop, you pay on subscription per year, $239. What I actually decided to do when I was buying my Whoop was they do have a plan where you can get a free Whoop to try it out. It comes with a wristband and then you get a free trial for a month. And then after that, you start paying $30 a month. What I did though, was I got the free trial. 
I talked to a bunch of friends about it. I showed it on the channel here. And if you refer a friend, they get a free month and I get a free month as well. So I was able actually to get this Whoop. At the moment, my subscription is free because the more people who click on the link, I get an extra month of subscription every time and it goes on. So if you do use my link below, you will get a free Whoop and a free month's trial. And I will get an additional month of usage on my Whoop. So I'd appreciate if you do it. But if not, use somebody else's, don't use mine. I'm not gonna to be too sad about it. But going back to the unboxing, it comes in just a cardboard box. It's recyclable, which is great. It does have a nice wool strap. These straps are $100 each though. I wanted to get one specifically that went on my bicep. Initially, the one I bought was a white one, which I thought was cool. I loved it for the first month, but it got so dirty. I never take it off and I'll tell you about the charging of these devices but when you're wearing something on your bicep all the time you do need to wash them and just getting the black one was the way to go in the end. I did pay out another $99 to get another bicep one but it's great. In terms of how you can wear these devices though this Whoop is really versatile. You can wear it on your wrist, you can wear it on your bicep. They also sell a whole line of clothing where you can wear it in your bra or in your underwear, t-shirts up on your neck, there's lots of different places. Basically you just need to have this connector here which reads uh, your your blood it's got a gyroscope and accelerometer and things like that inside in it but it needs to be able to connect to your skin directly so wherever's comfortable for you to wear it for me it's on my bicep because i don't really feel like i have it on i feel more free and I'm, I'm so used to wearing it now i don't even notice it there is one thing when i'm sleeping at night time if i have my head here sometimes i'll wake up with a little mark from the wound on my forehead but besides that really don't know i have it on Moving on to the second category, battery and charging. So starting with the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch lasts about two days. Um, if you get the Ultra, it lasts about two days. A typical Apple Watch just lasts one day and you find yourself charging it within every 24 hours. That's where it becomes a problem when it comes to sleep tracking. Because I found wearing this watch a lot of the time, I, I often forget. I'm supposed to put it on my stand when I get down to my computer in the morning and charge it for an hour. Sometimes I forget, sometimes I'm too busy, sometimes on the go and it dies on me and that's a real pain. And that's where both the Ultra Human and the Whoop have an advantage over the Apple Watch. They say the Ultra Human Air has about six or seven days of battery. I found it to have about five days, which is more than enough for me. It takes one to two hours to charge at any time. I never let it get, get it below about 15 or 10%. You get notifications when it gets super low. So I find myself topping it up all the time. If I go upstairs in the evening, I'm gonna jump in the shower. I'll stick it on charge for a while. It does take longer than you'd think to charge. And I can't believe it lasts five days for something this tiny. Just look at all the electronics packed inside in this. It's got a heart rate monitor. It's got a accelerometer. It's got, it's got so much tech in this. It's so small. It is smaller if you're someone who's considering uh, one of the Aura rings it is considerably smaller in diameter and, and overall it's just a smaller ring. I, I like it a lot more than the Aura. I've never used an Aura but in terms of how it looks and feels much nicer little ring. So in terms of charging how this works is you get this little puck with it. Each of these pucks which is a little annoying if you have friends who have an Ultra Human Air you can't actually use their charger unless they're the exact same ring size. So as I said I'm an S11 here so this is an S11 puck charger. What happens is the ring just sits down on top of it and it charges. It needs to sit in a specific orientation because there is an ever so small indentation on the inside of the ring where the sensor needs to be and that sits down there sits really well indicates that it's charging it does feel a little bit warm when you take it off and you first put it back on again you know it's been charging but in terms of traveling if you want to bring this with you if you're going out of town for more than five days so actually i haven't found myself bringing this with me because i usually go out of town for about five days um, but if you are if you're going on a long trip it's not a very big charger to bring with you, which is nice. But if you forget it, it's a real pain because there's nothing you can really do. Most of the things you kind of get, get out of jail, but unless you remember this, you're not gonna have it with you. In terms of the Whoop 4.0 though, I think this is the best of all the charging options. The way Whoop does it is that they give you this little charging puck with it. And what I've seen a lot of people doing is plugging the puck into the USB and taking this off their arm and sticking on it, but you don't need to. All you need to do is charge this puck. This one's charged, you can see it's green. And what you do is, you stick it on your arm and now it's charging. You'll see the light went green and green. So not only does the Whoop 4.0 last for about five days like the Ultra Human Air, but charging it as well, I can stick this on. So if I do find I'm gonna go for a long run or a, a workout, or if I see the battery's running low, or if I'm going to work and the battery's low and I don't have time to charge it, I'll stick the puck on, I'll still stick a shirt on. You don't notice that it's there. Genuinely, I know it looks chunky, but you don't notice it's there on a shirt. No one has ever said anything to me and you can charge the device in about an hour with this puck on. And then when you're finished doing it, you just take it off, you got your puck with you, you stick that back on the charger, and that's always ready to charge when you go. 
I've actually got a couple of these. I've got one upstairs next to my bed in case it's late at night and I forgot to charge it. I've got one down here on my work computer. So this device has actually never run out of battery. I charge it on me, it's fantastic. But that's what brings to the problem of, I do need to remind myself to take this off to wash it sometimes because I just leave it on my bicep indefinitely. So the third category is the app run through. Now the first app that I'm talking about is obviously the Apple Health app. Um, when you use an iPhone, you get the health, a health app, which is your central area where you can connect all your devices and applications to manage your overall health. And this is where I've actually found Apple to be the most lacking. Yes, Apple's great at doing sleep tracking. Yes, it's got great workouts. Yes, it's got a great app. The actual Apple Health app is really good at pulling in data from everywhere and giving you some insights when you go through it. But it's not really targeted at kind of telling you what to do. If you know what to look for, if you know how to interrogate it, all the information is there. But in terms of being kind of easy at a glance or something that might give you an indication of how your health is going or, or just kind of tell you what to do, which is what I wanted to do, the Apple Watch is lacking there. So where I found the apps to be much better are the Whoop and the Ultra Human Air. Now, both of these at a high level, and I'm gonna go through these apps in a second where you'll see in more detail, but both of these at a high level have ideas of strain. So basically how hard you're working or how much effort you put in the day recovery, meaning how well you slept, how much rest you got. It has different things like coaching plans. You can do workouts in each of these. They, own, they both have their own workout plans. So the Whoop 4.0 is definitely better at health and fitness tracking. It's just a better app for if you're gonna go for a run, you're gonna do weightlifting. It tracks you better, it never misses a heartbeat. It's just better at that in general. Whereas I found the Ultra Human Air is more about sleep tracking and just general health tracking. So let's jump into the application and talk specifically about some of the things in the Whoop app that I really, really like. So first and foremost, when you open the Whoop app, they have this idea of having a log or a journal that you fill out every single day and it's really customizable they have like a hundred different things or more that you could put in there I'm looking at did I take anti-inflammatory drugs did I feel nervous did I take an ice bath was I feeling sick or did I have an injury? Did I take magnesium? Did I take creatine? All things that are very specific to me. So it's a way for me to track my habits. And what it will do over time is using machine learning will say, you know, the days that you took ice baths had a 3% positive impact on your day and your health. The days where you didn't get enough sleep had a negative 8%, you know. So it does this really insightful data over time. So the more you wear it, the better that it actually gets. So the journal uh, pops up every single day when you wake up in the morning, you can check the boxes that make sense. You can stick in, did you have uh, how many milligrams here? I had some anti-inflammatories because I had a headache. Did I take my creatine? Did I take my vitamin D supplements? Things like that. And you can save it to your journal. You can see the overview on this overview page where you've got overview, sleep, recovery, and strain. Those are the four key areas that they work on in the Whoop 4.0 app. And I've got this, this health monitor area that shows my heartbeat, my respiratory rate, blood oxygen, heart rate variability, resting heart rate, and skin temperature. And all of mine luckily are in zone right now where I'd want them to be. It also gives me a sleep score for my today's activities so that I know how well I slept last night. So you can see I got nine hours and 25 minutes of sleep, three hours and 11 of which were restorative sleep. I didn't quite get my REM numbers to where that they usually would be, but I got a lot of light sleep. That's a lot of sleep for me, I typically get about, but I do get eight hours a night, I'm very consistent on that. You can see it's tracking my cal calories. You can see here, you can go through your performance over time. So this is my sleep performance over a week, a month, six months, a year. And it's also got lots of articles so you can learn more below that about how you might want to improve your sleep. So some articles, some videos, things like that just to help educate you on it. Here's my six month view of my sleep. So you can see my scores are typically quite high. I get very close to 100%. Then you've got a stress monitor for how busy your day was. How stressed were you in terms of just sitting at your computer? How tough a day did you have? It's really interesting to come in in the evening after a tough day at work and for your device to tell you that you've had a tough day at work. It's, it's crazy how it knows just by tracking some of your key metrics. Now I'm in the sleep tab where you can dig in a little bit deeper than you can see in the overview, where you can go through how much restorative sleep did I get? How much did I get traditionally over time? Into the recovery tab, I had a very good recovery night last night because I slept so much. My, my variable heart rate is doing well, my resting heart rate. My recovery was really good, better than it's been over time. Resting heart rate was, was down a little bit. 
Going into the strain tab, they have this concept of strain where I've done, because today I did a strain, I did a workout in the morning, I lifted some weights, so I was up at a 6.7 already. I typically try and get to about 12 in any one day. In this section of the app, you can see that you can add an activity, you can add to your journal, you can watch videos. There's a bunch of whoop workouts that you can do, whether it's high intensity workouts, or you wanna do back and biceps, you just wanna lift in specific areas. And then of course you can start your own activity. Now the thing I like about the Whoop app as well is not only starting your activity if you're about to do one, but it will record an activity automatically if you fail to record it. It will guess what it is, the difference between weightlifting and running for me or even walking or cycling, it knows the difference and typically gets it right for me. So I find using the Whoop app is fantastic because I don't have to be thoughtful in advance and think I'm gonna do this workout now and then start the workout, I can do it retroactively. So let's go through the Ultra Human Air app. Now, before I do it, I do want to introduce one thing that's a little bit different about this. And I do have a blood glucose sensor. This is new to Ultra Human Air, and it goes beyond what you get for your $350. $350 gets you the ring and the application. And I'll call out the difference of where you get the blood glucose monitoring. But they did send me this blood glucose monitor for free. It's cool. The way it works is it's a little small little thing that sticks into your tricep here. You get this little applicator, you'll see in the video, where I just click it onto myself, it pushes it in. What it does, it has a little tiny needle, which you really don't feel. I know people say you don't feel it. You genuinely don't. It's so thin. You pop it in and it leaves a little thread, basically like a, a little bit of sewing thread in your arm with a little piece of plastic thing here. This has a battery, a Bluetooth uh, transmitter, so it connects to my phone. I don't have to do anything. It just con continuously connects to my phone. So I've been wearing this now for five days and I really like it. It shows me the impact of the food that I'm eating on my blood glucose levels, but more more than that, it gives Ultra Human Air more insight into what's happening in my body as well as with you know all the measuring it's doing through my finger. It's able to give me much better insights into how I'm doing, when I should exercise, and when I should take some more rest. So let's jump into the Ultra Human Air application. One of the things I like about the Ultra Human Air that other apps don't have is your caffeine stimulant page. It tells you how much caffeine you can have within any window. It does more work on your circadian rhythm in terms of when you should be looking, you know, when you should stop using devices, when you should get bright light in your eyes in the mornings, things like that. It tracks all of those things, which are things I really haven't seen on any other application. So jumping in, you can see at the start there, it had my blood sugar level, caffeine stimulants, Similar to Whoop has a movement index, it has a sleep index, it has a recovery score, it tells me my cardio fitness, which is apparently slightly above average. It tells me my neutral impact of light on my eyes, depending on what time of day it is, my heart rate, my skin temperature, resting heart rate, a lot of the similar things that you saw with the Whoop 4.0 but also it's got this timeline of things that I've done. It gives me my stimulant permissible window. It tells me the impact of food, like I had some peanut butter and oatmeal for breakfast, what impact that had on my blood sugar levels. It gives me my total macros around calories. It connects in with my fitness pal application. So as I log food, it knows what food I've eaten. It correlates that with the blood glucose monitor. Here I'm scanning back through my blood glucose monitor to see how have I done over time. You can see I had a major spike yesterday at lunchtime when I ate a lot of carbohydrates and sugar. So you can see your blood sugar goes here. I'm shooting from 85 um, up to 160, which is not ideal. That's a major, what they call a, a spike in my blood sugar levels. Um, but it came down reasonably quickly, but I'm learning from it as I go. I'm learning the foods that trigger my blood sugar levels. I'm learning the crash afterwards and how that feels. I felt like going for a nap afterwards because of all those carbs. That was my blood sugar crashing after. And I'm finding ways that work better for my body in terms of energy. Because remember, 70% of the battle is what you eat, 30% is how you work out. If you can combine the two of those, you're really onto a winner. So clicking through some of these, here's my caffeine dependencies. I like this, how much caffeine I can have at a certain time. What happens is you see these grayed out areas at the bottom, means I can't have cold brew coffee anymore at this time of day, or Monster Energy, or cappuccino, because it's 150 milligrams, or cappuccino medium is 95. I could have a Red Bull, because it's got a 2.77 hour impact. I could have a mocha or a latte or an espresso. And you go all the way up through these to the kind of less caffeinated drinks like tea, black tea, diet cokes, etc. 
because you're in your caffeine window. I found this fantastic because I'm never sure when I'm supposed to not drink caffeine anymore. And I love that it has this as part of the ultra human air because I've not seen it on any other application before. So I know now I'm in an area where I can't drink caffeine anymore because uh, it'll ruin the rest of my uh, sleep and I will not get productive sleep tonight. Jumping into my movement index, you'll see I moved a lot given the time of day that it is. Uh, I've had um, two out of 14 active hours. I've, you, I've burned off 14,000 uh, calories. My sleep index is 91, so I've had pretty good sleep last night. As you know, I slept for nine hours. It says nine hours and 42 minutes in bed, um, eight hours and 37 minutes of sleep, so an 89% efficiency. The numbers, the percentages and how they, how WHOOP works versus how Ultra Human are different. They use their own scales, their own strain, etc. But as long as you stay within one of those ecosystems, you can learn, like I know what a certain score is within Ultra Human now versus my WHOOP 4.0. And I actually chose to have my Ultra Human be the thing that writes to my Apple data, to my, to my uh, health tracker. And I actually just review the WHOOP data because I find it there, you know, I actually find it to be not quite as good as the Ultra Human Air. And then finally my recovery score so how well you know how well sleeping plus my resting heart rate plus lots of other variables multiply together to give me a recovery score I'm in an 85 today which means I can go hard uh, sometimes my recovery score is below 50 and it says take a rest day I really like that that's where the Apple watch is missing is that it doesn't tell you what to do it's got all this data but I don't know what it means whereas these applications are able to say to me based on where you're at, where your heart rate is, how well you rested last night, where your blood sugar is at, I think you should take a rest day, or I think you should really go for it today and go for a seven or go for a nine. It gives you a number, so it's quantifiable, actionable, and motivating. So last one here that they have here is my VO2 max. My resting heart rate is in the excellent range, that it's at 52 beats per minute, but my VO2 max for my age puts me in the average category. So that's definitely something I can work on, do more zone two cardio. It's something that I've been incorporating more and more into part of my workouts. The way that I work out is I spend three days a week lifting, lifting weights. I've got a, I built a small gym in my back garden here. And then I try and do zone two cardio three days a week. The zone two cardio is a reasonably new thing for me. I've only been doing it for maybe six weeks and I'm starting to feel the benefits of that already. So hopefully my VO2 max will go up over time. The goal is to do zone two cardio for six months and then to work on high intensity VO2 max targeting, like doing sprints, things like that, that can help your VO2 max. But because I'm still not fit enough to do that yet, I'm still focused on zone two cardio. Okay, and finally into the fourth category, if I could only choose one of these, which one of these would I choose? I think it's difficult. I think the Apple Watch is fantastic. It's a premium device, it's $799, but it's probably the one I would choose last in terms of it being a fitness tracker. I think it's great. I love the Apple Fitness app, but probably last. So that really brings it down to the Whoop 4.0 and the Ultra Human Air. Now, for me, if I had to pick one, it would be the Ultra Human Air. Now, I mean the Ultra Human Air not including the blood glucose monitor, because the blood glucose monitor by itself is $300 a month. So it is very, very expensive. But if you just buy the $350 Ultra Human Air or the $315 using my link below, you get a lot for it. You got really great sleep tracking. You know how you're feeling. It'll do your VO2 max. It'll tell you your resting heart rate. And it's very small. Out of all the things that you wear, it's if you're okay wearing a ring, people don't notice it. I think, I think it's really fantastic. However, for me, Having the combined Whoop 4.0 and the Ultra Human Air with the blood glucose monitor gives me so much in insight into what I'm doing because this is better for tracking my activities. So if I set an activity, I believe the results that come from this are better. This is better for my sleep, my overall metabolic health, how my how my heart, you know, how, how I'm doing, how I'm feeling as a human, the Ultra Human Air, how I'm progressing in terms of my health and fitness, the Whoop 4.0. So those combined together, which I get most people aren't gonna want to do, I know that's insane, but it really gives me a massive insight and is one of the main reasons why I've been able to lose 40 pounds and continue on this health journey all this time. So what are some of the things that I didn't cover in this video you wanna know about? What are some of the things that are important to you when it comes to your health and fitness? And one of the things you think that really don't matter at all and you think that I'm mad, like, is it crazy to wear a blood glucose monitor when you're not diabetic just to get some insights? Probably a little bit. I wanna hear all about it in the comments below. Good luck.